Hello everybody, Cooper here and welcome back to another AFL Rebuild on my channel here on AFL 23. Today we're going to be taking control of the Hawthorne Hawks and guiding them to an AFL Premiership. This is a continuation of the series that I've already done. If you wish to see some of my other rebuilds, there is a playlist in the description down below. I hope you're all doing very well today. Let's get into today's rebuild. Now Hawthorne, they're currently in an interesting spot. They finished, I think, 16th last year, if I'm remembering correctly. They've sort of been forgotten, because there's sort of been West Coast and North Melbourne who have been the worst two teams of the last couple of years, but Hawthorne's generally been the, the third worst team. And they've sort of been forgotten about a little bit, in my opinion. So we're gonna, they've sort of gone under the radar, <laughs> under the radar, sorry, in terms of their I don't want to call it tanking, but their rebuilding process is what I'm calling it. So, but if we have a look at their roster, they've got a lot of good players that I do like. They've got uh, Mitchell Lewis, the love child of Sam Mitchell and Jordan Lewis, as I like to call him. They've obviously got Sicily. They've got Sam, not Sam Day, Will Day. Sam Day plays for Gold Coast. Will Day, who I'm a big fan of. I've been wanting to bring him across in some of my other rebuilds. And I think I've, I've gotten him in other rebuilds before, but I've been saving him because I knew I was doing the Hawthorne rebuild soon. So he's one of my favorite players to get in these rebuilds. Obviously brought Jack Gunston back from Brisbane last year, although I probably won't be using Jack Gunston as part of my long-term plans. It is nice to see him back in a Hawks uniform. They've also got Luke Bruce. They've got a whole host of really good players. Now I should actually mention, I forgot, I forgot Cam McKenzie as well, I forgot to mention good draft pick from the season previous and they who do they bring in in the draft this year they brought in uh, Watson who develops really nicely in these rebuilds and they've obviously got the man the myth the legend Jack Ginevan normally I wouldn't do this at the start of the video but I've gone to the restricted free agency section and I've noticed that Hardwick Nash and Scrimshaw are all restricted free agents these are all players that we're gonna be looking to keep as a part of our rebuild they are good players but I've been doing a lot of sort of rebuilds in my own time, just my own sort of general curiosity. And I've, I have brought across some of these players from Hawthorne and they do develop quite nicely as part of this rebuilds that I do. So I'm gonna try and keep them around as much as I can. I don't believe there's anybody too major in unrestricted free agency. If we scroll down the list, there's a few names here, but generally they are, you know, Chad Wingard's an older player, Gunston's an older player. I don't know too much about Stevens, Morrison and Frost. So they're not players I'm too familiar with. I'm not as familiar with Hawthorne's list as there has been a lot of turnover in the last couple of seasons. So it'd be interesting to see what uh, I can do with this team. Hopefully I can do something and get them a premiership fairly quickly. But we've got our first season now. I don't really expect a great deal from this first season. Really, my expectations are just get through the first season relatively unscathed. I don't expect to make finals or anything, but I will be starting Cam McKenzie, Nash, and Will Day. Oh, I've got John Newcomb, I forgot about as well. I've got a lot of good players here. So we're going to be putting Cam McKenzie on a wing, Will Day, Newcomb, Nash, all in the midfield. They've got McGuinness on a wing, who I'm not 100% sold by. Can't lay him on. 28 now. Is there anybody else down here that I really like? They've got Warple, 25. He's an 84 overall, so we'll bring him over McGuinness to play on the other wing. But I'm going to put a team together for this first season. I will let you know in a second what it's going to look like. Okay, I've made a few subtle changes to the team. Everything else I've kept pretty much the same. I haven't touched the back line. I like how it looks at the moment. There's not really a lot I can do. There's not really a lot of reserve players in the back line that I wanted to bring in. I did actually change one player in the midfield from what you just saw originally, and that is Josh Ward. He's 20 years old. He's gonna be playing on that uh, right wing. I've moved Warple to the bench. We'll see him a little bit later. But in terms of the rest of the midfield, everything else is the same. And I've also put uh, Nick Watson on the forward pocket, and I've taken Luke Bruce out of the forward pocket because he's getting a bit older now. I'll start to transition him out of the team. I don't know when his contract's up. We might, I think he's a New South Wales boy, Luke Bruce, so we might look to move him to a GWS or a, a contending team that could probably use his services better than us. 
because I want to be giving Nick Watson, he's the new draft pick, he's only a small fella, uh, so I want to give him a lot of game time and have him be a crucial part of the rebuild. Mitchell Lewis, just going to be at full forward. Mabu Chol, I know a lot about as a Gold Coast Suns fan. I'm not 100% sold on him, so we're probably looking to up the, upgrade that position even though he just got here. But everything else, I think, is, is okay for now. There's not a lot we can do with the list we have. So we're just going to confirm the lineup. We've got the Western Bulldogs in a preseason game. A win's a win if we can get it. If not, it's a preseason game. I'm not too worried about it. We win 17 points. Who's best on ground? Probably Newcomb Day got 34. Ginevan kicked four. But yes, I'm very happy with that first game. We have the Bombers in round one, of course. We did not play in opening round. We'll have a look if there's any injuries. Cam McKenzie is injured, unfortunately. James Warple can come in. We just have to find a midfielder. Actually, we're going to bring in Will McCabe, who's another one of our draftees from last season. I, he's, I know he's a father-son. I can't remember the first name of the father, but I know the father. He's in my head. I know who he is. I just can't think of his first name. But anyway, Will McCabe's just going to sit on the bench for us as one of our, our rotation players until Cam McKenzie comes back. Cam McKenzie's only out for three to four weeks with a hamstring tear, so that should be okay. We're pretty healthy everywhere else. So let's get into round one against Essendon. We've got to select the lineup again, apparently. Uh, I forgot to mention that one of my goals for this particular rebuild is the foundation of the team has generally been built on two really strong key forwards, whether it be like their premiership teams. They've always had two really strong key forwards. My examples for this are Dermot Burrett and Jason Dunstall, and what most recently, Jordan Ruff, uh, Jordan Rufford. No, yes, Jordan Rufford. I was thinking of his uh, of his cousin, and obviously, obviously Buddy Franklin. So those, I want to build a sort of, bring in another key forward to play with Mitch Lewis. I don't know if Mitch Lewis is the long-term solution. He is good. I do like him, but he, I don't know if he's going to be that sort of all-Australian class level key forward that I'm looking for. I'm going to do something there in the off-season. I'm not 100% sold on Mitch Lewis, but I do like him for this season. Hopefully he can kick a few goals for us, but we've got round one against Essendon. How do we go? We get smoked by 70, not a good start to the season. Watson kicked two goals on debut, that's something. Joe Newcomb got lots of the ball, as did Will Day. Gunston got 28 disposals, good for him. But yeah, we got taught a lesson by Essendon. I feel like this is gonna be a long season. We don't have the best list in the world. I will be back for the mid-season break. So, we've reached a mid-season draft and uh, awkward story, we're top of the ladder. The uh, simulation has been very kind to us. I will just quickly show my uh, my settings. Match difficulty hardest, contract difficulty hardest, trade negotiation, negotiation difficulty hardest. There are currently eight teams tied for the first place. <laughs> and we just so happen to have the best percentage. We've had a lot of big wins. And when we lose, we don't lose by much. In saying that, we did lose, I think around, we lost by 70 in round one, and then in round two, we won by 120. So it's sort of been one of those kind of seasons. But I think, aside from that, I didn't think we'd, be, we'd been doing that well. And we've sort of been hovering around fourth and fifth for the majority of the season. And for whatever reason, we're in first now. I don't expect us to be here at the end of the season. I think this is just an absolute fluke sort of result, but it's only the mid season, so I'm not that worried about it. I've been really impressed with Nick Watson. He's currently injured, actually coming back from an injury, if I can find him. He's been really good. He's kicked 19 goals in eight games, sitting in that forward pocket. He's been kicking straight. He's getting goal assists. He's only a small boy at 170 centimeters, but I really like him. He's really good. I don't know if, if he's been playing in real life. I, as I said, haven't been checking into too many Hawks games. We've had a few injuries here and there. Ginevan's been out for a little bit, as has McDonald. But for the most part, we've been pretty good with injuries. We've got a few fitness tests here and there. Newcomb's out with a hamstring tightness. Mid-season draft, we've required to take one pick. I don't really know who I'm going to draft here. We've got the 17th overall pick. I wouldn't mind taking another Ruckman because we did have to play one of our reserve key forwards as a Ruckman. So we might take channel favourite Toby Murray. I know I get him quite a lot, but he's just... 
He just does the job. He's never my first choice option, but I really like him. And I don't remember who he used to play for, but he's in and around the squad a lot. And I just like him. I like having him around. So Toby Murray's now a member of the Hawthorne Hawks yet again. And it's now first versus second in Sir Doug Nichols' round. Very interesting indeed. Newcomb is injured, as I said. We'll have to bring in Warple, who was the sub for the last match. I believe Watson is back, so we're gonna bring him back in. He won't be the sub. We might make Wingard the sub. I think we'll do that. Bruce is starting at the moment, as we had another injury to Hardwick, that's who it was, and Ginvin as well. So yeah, our small forward's really copying it at the moment. But yeah, a lot of injuries. We've got six injuries at the moment. I think we had about eight at one point in time, which I said wasn't bad because they were all relatively short injuries. But obviously, when your best players aren't playing, it does sort of hurt the cause a little bit. But I shouldn't complain. We're top of the ladder. I wonder how this match is going to go. We crash back down to earth. We lose by 99 at home. Fantastic. Who kicked all the goals for Brisbane? Hipwood kicked four. Danaher kicked three. Yeah. McCluggage had 52 touches. Who? Sneaky Sneaky is a free agent at the end of the season. So that might be a direction we go in, depending on how much money we have. I don't know who. I haven't looked at our contracts really for this season. I just know that we've got some expiring free agents of our own that we want to bring back. But if we have some room, we might go for McCluggage, depending on. Let's go for the rest of the season. Now we're all the way down to fifth. Jeez. Actually, let's have a look after everyone's... Yeah, we're in sixth now. So, as I said, we've sort of been flopping and changing all around the top eight. Position fifth through to 11th are all on the same points. And there's, there's one game between 11th and first. This is crazy. This has never happened to me before. So, I'll be back at the end of the season. I We could finish anywhere between... First and 14th, as far as I'm concerned. Let's see how we go. We've reached the end of the season and we ended up finishing in second. So we got down to about seventh at one point, then we went on a big winning streak, and then we lost two games in a row at the end of the season, and then we won our last game by 10 points against North Melbourne. So I'm actually quite happy with how things turned out. The first season of the rebuild ultimately doesn't matter because if we win a premiership like we did in the last video in the first season, we still have to do a second season anyway. So, but I'm still, it gives me a perspective to see what kind of team we have and where sort of the strong points are, where the weak points are. But we've got a qualifying final up against Carlton. Could go either way. You know, Carlton are a really good team in the simulation. They've got, because they've got a lot of really strong players, such as your, your Charlie Kernos, your Weederings, your Sam Walsh's of the world. They're probably a higher rated team than us, than us. We probably just got a bit lucky in the simulation. So I, I probably wouldn't be surprised if we lose this particular finals match. We might have to bring in Toby Murray. So I don't actually think we have another backup Ruckman. Where is Toby? Here he is. Legend of the channel. Gonna bring him in to be, uh, he's playing his first game of the season, the qualifying final. Will McCabe has played every game. I've been really happy with his production. He's been really good. Nick Watson did have a little bit of an injury towards the end of the season, but he is back. He ended up playing 20 games for us. We'll go over stats for the season at the end. You know, we'll do that in a minute. But this is basically how the team looked for the last couple of games for the season. Jarman Impey's out with an injury, unfortunately. Hardwick's still out. Sam Frost, I would be playing him at fullback, but we had to bring in Blank. Now, I, I really like this guy in real life. I have no idea how to say his name. So I do apologize. Is it Jayath? Jayath? Is that how you say it? I'm gonna say Jayath for the rest of the video, but if I'm wrong, I do apologize. He got injured, so I brought Will McCabe to play in the back pocket, but because I thought he deserved a promotion. Meek we've just taken out, as you saw. Chol kicked five goals in a the game, then got injured. And then that's basically the rest of the team. But yeah, qualifying final. I don't really like our odds. It appears that Patrick Cripps is injured because that is not Patrick Cripps. We win. Okay, that's great. Didn't kick straight, but we won. So, yeah, interesting game. Moore kicked four goals. Will Day had 40 touches. Chera had 40 for Carlton. And, yeah, we just overwhelmed them with scoreboard pressure. Really did a good job. We got the week off. 
We're playing, I thought we were going to play a game at Tasmania for a second. I'm like, why are we playing a final in Tasmania? But we're not, we're playing GWS who finished in fifth. Nick Watson is injured for a big finals game. That is not ideal, but that is okay. Meek is back, so Toby Murray, you are relieved of your duties. We'll fix up that ruck situation. We still need a replacement for Watson, preferably a Ford. That is good, which appears to be in short supply. We'll, we'll bring in Connor McDonald. He can do a job. He can be there for us. Everybody else is good. I think, I think everybody else is good. I will double check. Yes, we're all good. We are all good. Prelim final time up against the Giants. I Is it weird to say I would prefer a loss because... If we go back to back grand finals again, that's sort of a little bit annoying. But if we lose, I'm not broken hearted. We win by 67. So apparently Hawthorne are a premiership contender this year. Five goals each to Bruce and Ginevan. I almost said winding back the clock because I saw the initials JG and I thought it was Jack Gunston. But no, it's Jack Ginevan. He kicked five. Really good game for us. Who do we have in the grand final? It is none other than the Brisbane Lions, who we have dealt with many times this season so far. I think we've played them twice in the home and away season. They've been they've been top of the ladder all season long. If not, whenever we've been top, they've been second. But yeah, very strange. It's been a bizarre season. Nash, unfortunately, is gonna miss out on the grand final. Impy is back. I'm not gonna play Impy at center. Just calm down, everybody. Warple can play at center for now. Impy, D'Ambrosio can come in, come to the bench, I should say, for Impy. Is Watson fit? He is fit. Now, who do we take out? Probably Amon or McGuinness. Who do I actually take McDonald out? I know he's the better player, but I want to give Nick, Nick Watson. He's the new draft pick, so I want to get excited about him. He can play on the bench for today. I've not, I've not yet lost a grand final on the channel, so it would be nice to keep that streak going. But... At the end of the day, this match really means nothing. It's all about the seasons after this. So again, not too heartbroken if we lose. We win by 104 points, good God almighty. So we're not gonna hear the song today, at least at this point of the video. Who gets the Norm Smith medal? Will Day, I mean, it's hard to go, actually Ward might get the Norm Smith medal. 40 touches and five goals, that might be Norm Smith medal worthy. He's gonna get it. Sorry, Will Day. 51 touches would normally get you the Norm Smith medal, but 40 touches and five goals. It's hard to go past that. But we've won the Premiership first season. Unbelievable. Let's have a look at the uh, the league statistics quickly. Mitchell Lewis, I said I wasn't too convinced by him, by him in the start of the season, and he's bat in my face and kicked 75 goals this year, so we might actually have to keep him. So, I mean, I don't. I never said he was a bad player, but... As I said, I don't. He'll probably win all Australian in this this particular season. But if we look at the stats for Hawthorne this year, uh, Chol 49 goals, very happy. More kicked 48. Ginevan 43, probably in a career best year. Back to back premierships for Ginevan. So, you know, technically won the premiership last year with Collingwood. This year with Hawthorne, so good for him. Watson kicked 35 in his debut season. Bruce, we're probably going to move on. We would actually, yeah, we'll definitely move him on to we'll move him to a, a New South Wales team. That generally makes a bit of sense. Gunston only played the 10 games. Wingard only the 11. So yeah, these older players we're going to be looking to shuffle on. So Nash, 936. Will Day, 932. Newcomb, 876. Very happy with how this season played out. Kind of shocked at the same time. Clearances, there's your leaders. Tackles, there's your leaders. And marks, there's your leaders. Were we, I don't think we were that accurate in front of goal. We will have to have a look at this. Lewis was, Chol wasn't, Watson wasn't, Gunston definitely wasn't, but for the most part, we did okay. We did have a few weird games where, we're, where we were inaccurate in front of goal, but largely it didn't affect us too much. So that's a positive result. Let's get into the end of season awards. Mills wins the Brownlow. Screw the Ruckman. Mills wins the Brownlow. Who, let's have a look at the Hawthorne votes. So Reeves got 29, Nash 13, Day 11. Watson got a vote, good for Watson. Good, good for him getting in the votes. Mitch Lewis just missed out on the Coleman this year. 
Harry Mackay gets his second Coleman of his career. Charlie Curnow only kicked the 62 this year. And no Watson for the Rising Star. That is disappointing. In terms of the All-Australian team, no Mitch Lewis. So that, you know, even though he was top three in the goals, that is surprising. Nash and Day make it as midfielders. Any defenders, Will McCabe makes it. He did play every game as a key defender, so good for him. And nobody made it as a defender. Trade period is now open, but first and foremost, we need to have a look at our contracts. See who stays, see who goes, see who's making an absurd amount of money that we could spend better elsewhere. First, look at things. I want to basically get rid of anybody that's under, not anybody, but like if you're under an 85 overall and you don't have the potential to be better than an 85 overall, I'm probably going to get rid of you. So I want to sort of do an absolute clean slate rebuild with Hawthorne. I know, I know my last rebuild with Sydney, I did a few minor tweaks because I feel like Sydney are already a really good team. Hawthorne winning the Premiership this season was kind of a fluke. Let's be honest, this this is not a Premiership team. I want to win a proper Premiership, properly dominate the AFL. And the way to do this is basically keep all the good stuff, get rid of the bad stuff. So we're going to be doing that in this fun little trade period. So players like Mitch Lewis, Newcomb, Jarman Impey will keep. Warple, even though he's... How old is Warple? He's 25. He's not going to get any better. That's $462,000 we can spend on another player. Sicily, even though he's, I think he's 30 now. Sicily, 29. We'll keep him. We'll keep him for a couple more seasons, depending on how long the rebuild goes. Reeves, I don't know his potential is. He's only... Oh, he's 25. I thought he was a bit younger than that. He's going to go. Jeff can stay. Frost can go. Amon's out. Nash is staying. Will Day staying. Moore is staying. Scrimshaw is staying. Hardwick staying. D'Ambrosio, because he's on a rookie contract, he can stay. So if you're on a rookie contract and you're cheap relative to your player ability, you can stay. That's the only exception to the rule. Meek can go. So I don't think he's got room to grow. He does not. Mabio Chol, I know he only just got here. He can go. Gunston's expiring. Gone. Wingard, I know I said he was probably going to go, but he's a rookie contract, so we can probably sign him up really cheap for next season. So we keep him. Stevens, how old's Stevens? He doesn't want to re-sign. Did we not play him at all? I thought we played him. Okay, we're going to have to trade Stevens, unfortunately. I did not realize I did not play him at all. Bruce, we're going to move him. We've already talked about trading him. Weddle, how old's Weddle? He's not that old, he's 20. I thought he might have been like 21, 22, but he's got good potential, so we'll keep him around. Granger Barris, I don't know how old he is. We'll have to look at him. Ward can stay, McCabe can stay, McKenzie can stay, Sarong can go. We might trade him to Fremantle so he can be with his brother. Butler can stay. But yes, we've got a lot of work to do. There's a lot of uncontracted sort of players I want to move on. There's a lot of players I want to keep. So we're going to be focusing on re-signing the players we want to keep first, and then we'll do some trades, and then we'll do some trades out, and then we'll do some trades in is what I'm trying to say. So let's have a look at the contracts. We have signed GF to a $575,000 a season contract for another nine years. It was actually the cheapest option to sign him for nine years. I was initially only going to sign him for three years, but he only wanted about $630,000 a season. So I signed him for nine. We probably won't do a nine-year rebuild because that is absurd. This, I, I'm hopeful this won't take another nine years. We, we won a premiership with a very undercooked team. So I'm, if we do it right, we will definitely be able to win a premiership within the next couple of seasons. So he signed up. Let's move on to the next player. Same sort of deal for Connor Nash, $630,000 a season for another nine years. Nice to tie him down. Again, cheaper option for the nine years. Let's continue signing up some more players. Jack Scrimshaw has signed a nine year, $515,000 a season. It's a lot cheaper than he was last season, about $15,000 cheaper, when, which when I say a lot, isn't actually a lot, but every dollar counts when you're trying to do a rebuild. Nice to have him signed up for the long term. Let's keep going. 
Nine years, $520,000 a season for Blake Hardwick. Good deal for us. Again, cheaper than last year. There's more players to sign. I'm trying to get through this as quickly as possible. We gotta keep going. Chad Ringard has re-signed. Nine years, $90,000 a season. Bit of a bargain for us because he's a rookie listed player, but just a backup option. Nothing more than that for him. He's getting older. I expect him to get worse. We'll probably trade him before the nine years is up. Okay, I've re-signed everybody I wanted to re-sign. We're just gonna sit on the Harry Morrison screen for a little bit. He's out of the club. We're not gonna bring him back. We've got about $3 million just under $3 million to spend at this point in time. This is obviously before we've traded anybody out. So this money, this money amount, this number money amount will reduce. And then we'll look to bring some players in. But we've done our initial phase of business. Let's do some trades. I don't know, before we do some trades, let's actually have a look at the draft situation. So is there any, ooh, there is some good players. There's a key forward. Tracy, Cameron Tracy, Western Australian. He's only 173 centimeters tall, which I don't know how I feel about that for a key forward, but he had a good carnival, 80 overall. We might be trading for the number one pick. And there's also a key defender, Ashton Neville. Here we go. We could go key forward, we could go key defender. What's our key defender situation actually? So I know we have McCabe who played a lot of games for us last year. Frost is leaving. Actually, let's do it this way. I'm being silly. So we've obviously got Sicily. We've got McCabe who we're keeping. We don't actually have any other key defenders under contract. So I know there's a few key defenders in free agency that we could look at. So that might be a way for us to go. But if we go, if we don't go down that path, we might trade for the top. We're probably definitely gonna trade for the number one pick to get that forward but we might trade for a top two pick to get the key defender as well. So we might see how we go in free agency. We'll do that first and then we'll see how we go. But let's let's get into, into some trades now. All right, we're gonna put this together with GWS. Uh, Luke Bruce, good servant of the club. I think, to, I'm calling it time. He's only gonna get worse from here. You can't see me, but I'm doing the uh, the T symbol with my hands. We're calling a timeout. He's out of here. If we get two second round picks for him, I feel like that's good value. Giants add a good experienced player to their forward line. They're obviously trying to push on to a premiership. They made the prelim in 2023 and they only just lost. So they want to get over the line. Luke Bruce might get them there. So let's put this deal through. They're extremely pleased with it. Thank you for your service, Luke Bruce. Time for you to go. We're going to be doing this trade with the Gold Coast Suns. We're going to be sending Cooper Stevens, Denver, Granger, Barrett. I believe it's Cooper Stevens. I don't actually remember his first name, but I believe it's Cooper. We're going to be sending those two who are expiring contracts. They are good young players in exchange for pick nine, a future first, a future second, and pick 27 in this year's draft. I don't intend to use pick nine in the draft. I'll be using that in a trade but I want to find a good home for some young talent that we're not going to particularly use. These guys don't want to re-sign with us anyway, so we're going to be moving them on so we don't lose them for nothing. And I feel like the Gold Coast Suns are the perfect home for those guys. So hopefully this deal goes through and they say it's an extremely fair deal. We get some more draft capital, which we definitely be leveraging in a trade later on. This is just moving on some expiring deals. We're going to be sending these four players in exchange for pick 22 in this year's draft. Hopefully St Kilda accept this straight up. They're happy with it. They take on some players that we're never going to use. We get a draft pick. Everybody's happy. Doing a very similar deal here with Fremantle. We're going to be sending Sarong and his buddies through to Fremantle in exchange for two picks. Sarong, I don't know why he's such a low overall. Like I feel like he's an okay player, but anyway, I'm not a game developer. What would I know? 29 and 47 coming our way. Hopefully Fremantle accept this deal. They're saying we're a bit far off. What if we take out 47 and just do 29? Still too far off. What if we do a future third round pick instead? They say they're happy with that. So we're gonna continue making deals like this until we just accumulate a pick after pick after pick. And then we're gonna be trading all those picks for players that we will use, plus free agents. Let's keep going. Okay, we're going to be really cleaning house here with this trade. Amon, Frost, McDonald, and McGuinness. 
I was just checking I wasn't trading McKenzie instead of McDonald because in a rebuild I did off camera, I accidentally traded the player that I didn't want to trade because they had a similar name. In exchange for four picks, sending this to Geelong. Normally I wouldn't do a deal between rivals, but I feel like this is a deal that helps both teams. Hopefully they accept this deal. They're ecstatic with the deal. We probably could have taken a little bit less out of the deal, but I feel like we are going to benefit from this deal greatly just by clearing up a lot of cap space. So let's keep going. I know I've said it a few times, but we gotta keep going. We will get there. This is gonna be a long video. They're all long videos. What am I talking about? This is where things get interesting. We're going after the number one pick. Meek, Morrison, Reeves, and Blank in exchange for pick one, 19, future first and second for next season. Hopefully they accept. They're insulted by the deal. Of course they would be. Let's take out the future first. We probably don't need the future first. They're extremely pleased with the deal. I probably could have done something a little bit different there, but all that matters, we got the number one pick. We're gonna get the key forward we wanted from Western Australia. He's gonna be the future Buddy Franklin. I'm very happy about it. A future Buddy Franklin at 173 centimeters. Gonna be interesting how that sort of pans out. This is probably gonna be the last massive sort of player dump pick swap deal we're gonna be making. So we're gonna send Warpool, Chol, and Gunston. I know Gunston doesn't like playing in Adelaide, so we're gonna be sending him to Port, you know, reasons. Uh, in exchange for pick 10, 28, and a future second. Hopefully they accept this deal. They're ecstatic with it. We probably could have asked for a future first as well, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. As you can see with this screen, we have gotten rid of a lot of players. We still have a, a few players left that we want to get rid of. How much money do we have actually left on the books? We have approximately 5.1 million to spend on 22 players. So this could get very fun. What I'm going to do now is we're going to head over to free agency and have a look. Not trades, I don't want to do that. We want to go to free agency and have a look at the restricted section. That's generally where the good players are. We've already had a look at the unrestricted section uh, earlier in the video. There wasn't a lot there. So players I'm targeting in restricted free agency uh, is a key forward who we could potentially pair with Mitch Lewis. We've got obviously the guy we're going to be picking up in the draft with the number one pick. He's probably going to be a nice backup, but we want to be bringing somebody in who can do a good job with Mitch Lewis. Now, if there's someone here, we'll bring him in. If not, we'll look to bring one in via trade. I also want to bulk up our midfield with sort of a really, really strong midfielder. Not strong as in like muscly, but strong as in like really, really good. So there's number two. And I also want to get some more back pockets, half forward flanks, those kind of players as well, which there are a lot of those here. So that gives us a few options, a few players I'm going to be shortlisting. First of which is Hugh McCluggage. Now he's sort of the strong midfielder that I was referring to. The problem with Hugh McCluggage is, is he's expensive. Now I don't really want to be spoiling all of my money on one player, but if we want to go down that path, he is always there for us. The other option in terms of midfielders that we could really go to down is uh, someone like Graham. We could go and pick him up from Richmond. Obviously not as good as uh, Hugh McLuggage, but is also a possibility of an option that we could pick. I was gonna say in terms of forwards, but I've had a look at Tim English. We currently don't have a Ruckman and Western Bulldogs did finish last. So we might look, actually just pick up Tim English while we're here. Defenders is the next uh, point of emphasis that we want to be looking at. So I know we're not talking about key defenders, but we're going to be looking at uh, sort of small defenders. So we've got Cumming from GWS, who I really, really like. We've got O'Connor from Geelong. Although I don't know how he'd, he'd feel about crossing from Geelong to Hawthorne. And we've also got Andy McGrath, who I've picked up in a couple of other rebuilds that I've done sort of off camera. Again, I don't know how we'd feel about crossing from Essendon to Hawthorne. I don't really know how the Victorian rivalries work. I just know that if you were to go from Port Adelaide to Adelaide or Gold Coast to Brisbane, there's always a big deal about it. But we'll shortlist him anyway. So with this shortlist that we've made, we've got a few options of players that we can go down. We haven't, we didn't, obviously didn't find any key forwards in restricted free agency, but we can obviously get one by a trade. So the first deal I'm probably gonna make is for Graham is another midfielder. It, we've got a lot of good midfielders already. If we already have a look at our list, 
We've got Newcomb, we've got Nash, who we've just signed a new contract to, Day, Ward, McKenzie, and not Hustwaite. We're going to be delisting him. He's just, I couldn't, I literally could not be bothered trading him. Because, like, what we would get back is, like, a seventh round pick. But anyway, we've got a lot of good midfielders. I want to be keep adding more and more midfielders to the collection, basically. So we've got, not National Draft, keep pressing the wrong buttons. So we've got Graham. I don't know what Hugh McCluggage is going to ask for. It would definitely be north of a million dollars a season. I don't necessarily know if I want to be spending that amount of money. I really, I was hoping to go anywhere between six and seven hundred thousand. So that's sort of the goal there. Because ideally, I'd like to get three or four of these players that I have on screen currently. Now, English, I know we want to bring in a Ruckman because I traded away two of them. He is definitely probably going to be a definite. We're probably going to get Tim English. We're probably going to get one of McGrath and Cumming and then one of McCluggage and Graham. So that's probably how I'm going to go. I'm going to ponder about this and think about it while we look for other trade options. I'm going to do that off camera. So I'm just going to take a pause for the cause now. I'll be back once I've made some decisions. Okay, Restricted Team English has accepted an offer from us. They are hoping a trade can be made, which means the Western Bulldogs have matched their offer, or sorry, the bid on Team English. So we offered him nine years, $850,000 a season. It was the cheapest we were able to get him. I opted for three years initially and he wanted sort of in the $950,000 range. So we definitely got a bit of a bargain in terms of offering him a longer contract. He obviously will be very old once the contract expires, but I'm hopeful that because it's a, going to be hopefully a short rebuild, we don't actually have to get to that point. So we're going to work out a deal for Team English now. Okay, this is sort of a joke trade that I've put together. We're going to be making a deal. I want Huss Waite to be the first player in the trade, just, just for my own amusement. But we're sending two first round picks in 10 and 18, as well as a second round pick to the Western Bulldogs in exchange for Team English. Hopefully they accept it and they're extremely <laughs> pleased with the, I did not think that trade was gonna go through, but it did. I think because he's a free agent, like the likelihood of the trade going through is a bit more. They're just happy to get something in return, but we're very happy. Team English is now a member of the Hawthorne Hawks. Isaac Cumming has accepted an offer from Hawthorne to play for the next nine years, $565,000 a season. GWS have elected not to match the deal. He is now ours. We don't have to trade for him, which is great. That's just one less thing that I have to do. So Isaac Cumming, welcome aboard, good sir. I just saluted and you guys can't see me, so it's very awkward. Jack Graham has now accepted a deal with Hawthorne. Nine years, $510,000 a season. Richmond have elected not to match the deal. I've had a look at our midfielder situation. We actually have a lot less midfielders than I thought. So I'm probably going to end up going for Hugh McCluggage as well. Now, if we have a look at our money situation now, we currently have $10.3 million spent. We have approximately $3.2 million to spend on a minimum of 19 players. Now, if we spend, let's just say, 1 million of that on Hugh McCluggage, that gets us to 2 million on 18 players, which is possible, can be done but we'll just have to see how we go. So I'm gonna try and get a thing done with McCluggage. I'm not saying it will happen, but I'm going to try my best to make it happen. Hugh McCluggage has accepted a nine year deal, 1.055 million a season. Brisbane have elected not to match the deal. He is ours. Our midfield has gotten a lot stronger in this period. Very happy with what we've done here. We now need to move on to key forwards. I was going to look at bringing in Andy McGrath as well, but we've actually got a lot of defenders now. Now that we've got coming, we had a few more than I thought, but I just wanted to bulk out the depth a little bit. So I'm not going to get Andy McGrath. So we're going to remove him from the watch list. If we have a look at AFL key forwards now, there are a lot of names, not a lot of really, really, really good ones that are age appropriate, let me say. So I don't want to be getting someone like Tex Walker, for example, is a free agent, is a 90 overall, but I, I'm not going to be wanting to go after him because I don't, one, I don't think it's particularly realistic that he's going to leave the Crows. And two, 
he's just only going to get worse. So I want to get someone who's going to be young enough. It's reasonably realistic that he would go to Carlson. Um, to, to Carlson, to Hawthorne. I was eyeing off Charlie Kerner. I'm like, would he? No, he wouldn't. So I would... I'm trying to stay reasonably realistic with this. I know me getting rid of half the list isn't particularly realistic. But if we go down the list, I know I got Peter Wright from Essendon in the last video. That was quite good. I did enjoy that. He was very good for us. We could go after someone like a Ben King from the Gold Coast. I did talk about him in my Sydney video. Lacocious even would be good fun. Play at centre half forward. That would be interesting. I've gotten Cadman a few times, so we're probably not going to get Cadman. Jesse Hogan, he's sort of, if he was a few years younger, I could probably go down that path. Jeremy Cameron, probably not interested. And we've got our guys here. So we've only really only got Mitch Lewis as, as a really strong target. Gunston isn't even on the team anymore. I don't know why it says Hawthorne. Melbourne, no. Nick Larky could be interesting. I don't really know how I feel about that. I feel like I'd rather get someone like Ben King. I feel like that would be more interesting. Port Adelaide, I don't think... I think I know Todd Marshall's a free agent, but I don't know how old he is. I'll shortlist him, but I'll have a look in a minute. Kajitsky just left Hawthorne, so he probably wouldn't go down that path. We could go Max King from St Kilda, although he's a little bit injury prone. So I'd probably, I'd rather prefer Ben King. Sydney don't have any, I have Logan McDonald, but I don't think he'd want to leave. And then Oscar Allen's not going to leave West Coast. And then Sam Darcy I've gotten before. Jamara I've gotten before. I'm not the biggest Aaron Norton fan in the world. And then we're getting into the mid-season draft, guys. So we've created a little shortlist for key forwards. We've got three guys that we're looking at. We've got two Gold Coast players and Todd Marshall. How old's Todd Marshall? He's only 25. It feels like he's been around forever. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's just because he made his debut very young. Would he want to leave? Port? I don't know. Ben, ben King's at least from Victoria. I don't know where Todd Marshall's from. But I can at least talk myself in to Ben King being interested in coming to Hawthorne someday. Lacocious. He's probably the third option because he's South Australian. Whether he'd want to go to Victoria, I don't know. And plus, he really likes it up on the Gold Coast. He just signed a new contract. So, my number one target is going to be Ben King. But just for scientific curiosity, I'm going to have a look at Todd Marshall's contract situation. I'm just going to lowball the crap out of him. I just want, I'm just interested to see what he's after. So, I know he's obviously going to be a lot cheaper than, than Ben King. He wants 508 a season. Is there a world where I could get both? Could I talk myself into, that's one, Ben King's gonna be north over a million. So I'm just gonna say 1.1 for him. So 1.6 million puts us at right on 13 million. I don't think we can get both. I really only think we can get one of these guys. And if we get King, we'd probably have to cheapen out on the back half of the roster. And I know we have the key forward coming in in the draft. So we're probably going to... Yeah, let's get Ben King. If we're, if we're going to do it, let's do it properly. We're not going to be cheap about this. Let, let's do it properly. We'll give him the nine years. We'll, let's do this properly. We'll start him at 450000 That's what he was making last year. 1.135 is what he's after. He's really good, though. I really like him. I'm glad he's on the Suns. I'm very glad he's on the Suns. This could take a while. It's a long way to 1.35. He has accepted the deal. It's going to take a lot to get him, but we have a lot of picks. Luckily, nine years, 1.135 was the number in the end. Now we've got to go to Gold Coast. We've already done a trade with the Gold Coast, which was the... We, gave, we, we scratched their back with giving them a lot of young talent. We, we did give them a key forward, so it would make sense that they give us a key forward. So what do we have that they would want? We have picks eight and nine. That's a good start. I don't think that would be enough though. 
What if we go to 2930, picks eight and nine, and they give us two third round picks as well. So I don't want to pay too much. That are ecstatic with the deal, we paid too much, but that's okay. We weren't going to use picks eight and nine anyway. Ben King, welcome to Hawthorne. I need to do some mini trades to get some smaller players, not smaller as in size, but smaller as in contracts to really bulk in out the back part of the roster. I don't want to be relying on the draft too much. So I'm going to figure some stuff out. I'll be back in a minute. We've gone back to the Western Bulldogs. We've put a deal together with Jake Stain. Nine years, $90,000 a season as a rookie list contract. He's going to be an 84 overall key defender for us. I don't expect him to play every game or really any game for us. He's just there purely as a backup option, much like Chad Wingard is. So hopefully we can work out a deal with him. We're going to be sending pick 48 and pick 57 over to the Western Bulldogs. Now, this is actually our third trade with the Western Bulldogs. We did a bit of a pick swap with them as they had the number one pick this year. We also did the deal for Tim English. So we're going to be sending a few more draft picks over there in exchange for Jake Stain. Hopefully they accept this deal. They say it's significantly less than what they're actually asking for. What if we give them a third, third round pick? They're still saying that is no good. What if we take out pick 48 and give them pick 28 instead? Hopefully they accept this deal. Again, not enough. We'll add 48 back in. And they accept that. So we've got another key defender on a reasonably cheap deal. Let's keep adding relatively cheap contracts to this team. We've offered a nine year deal, $455,000 a season to Ivan Soldo of Port Adelaide. He's an unrestricted free agent and he is going to be our backup ruckman uh, for Tim English. So we've got a nice backup ruckman, 84 overall. He's gonna fill a job for us. If he does regress, we can always move him on to another team, but I'm very happy we've now got a solid backup ruckman. We've put a deal together for Sydney Stack of North Melbourne. He was picked up in the mid-season draft, nine years, $90,000 a season on a rookie contract. We will be looking to move over some of our second round draft picks, probably all three of them in exchange for a future first round pick as well. Hopefully they accept this deal. They're saying it's a little under what they're expecting. What if we throw in a future third only a future third, we can only throw in a future third. We're close to an agreement. What if we take out the future third and we throw in a future second? They say it's extremely fair. So we, that's probably all the work that we're gonna be doing. We've picked up a couple of extra players. We're gonna be leaning on the draft now. How many roster spots do we actually have filled? We've got 28 spots, so there's only 14 picks that we need to complete in the draft. We've got not a lot of money left so we might have to restructure a few of the free agent contracts that we brought in so we will do that at the end of the off season but now let's head into the draft number one overall pick does belong to us and as we've said many times before we're going to be taking tracy 92 to 99 potential he's an 81 overall how he's not a suggested player i don't know but he is very good let's select him now we don't have a pick until pick 78 as we did trade the majority of our second and third round picks. Actually, we traded all of them. So pick 78 is here. Now, Lockie Gollant is available. He's one of the best players available as is Cooper Sharman. But we'll have a look and see who was on an AFL list last year. I wouldn't mind picking up a Ruckman. We've got Blakey, I know he's not a Ruckman, he's a midfielder. But if we can find a Ruckman that played on an AFL list last year, that would be the ideal fit. I can't see a good one, so we'll maybe stay away from there for now. But in terms of midfielders, we've got Collier Dawkins, and then we've got Blake. We might go Collier Dawkins. Also, we've also got Tyler Brown, who was picked up in the mid-season draft. So we're actually going to go Tyler Brown with our uh, 78 overall pick. I've had a look through the draft, and the best available Ruckman is Hale. He's a 69 overall. Actually, we'll take the guy that's underneath him, McCaig. He's got slightly better potential. It's the same overall. He's a bit of a lumbering type of ruckman, which normally isn't my favorite thing to get, but we're going to draft him. We don't have a third or fourth choice ruckman, so we're just going to take one here. Now, we still have a fair few picks to get through. So we've got Cooper Sharman, who is available. Did he play at AFL last year? I'm assuming he did. He did. And Lockie Golan is also here. So we're going to take Cooper Sharman. 
who is the better overall player. He is a year older, but they have the same potential. So we're going to go with Cooper Sharman here with our next pick. McNeil is going to be the next pick for us. He's a crumbing forward. We did pick one up in Sydney Stack not too long ago, but we're going to take another one just to add to our collection. We haven't drafted one yet, but he's just going to be a nice backup for us. O'Donnell will be the next pick. 77 overall, key defender, intercepting player. He's only 22. I'm surprised he's here. He's actually got quite good potential. So we're going to be taking him with our next pick. We don't need too many defenders, which, you know, I... I'd, I'd like to pick up at least one of each position in the draft, and this is the only position we haven't drafted for yet. So we're going to be taking Charlie Constable. He's the best player available. He used to play for Gold Coast and Geelong, if I'm not mistaken. He's an okay player. He's not a bad player by any means, but we're going to be drafting him just to fill up a bench spot, really. We now have the final five picks of the draft. Uh, we're going to take Reese here. Lockie Gollant is still here. doesn't really matter who we pick in what order because we, we own all of the final five picks in the draft. So we're going to be taking Reese who is a 17 year old with good potential. We're going to be taking Lockie Golan, who is probably the best available total player in the draft. Still at this point, 78 overall, going to be drafting him. We've taken four key forwards this draft. It's a, it's a good draft for key forwards. We'll have a look at midfielders to see who's here. Tyler Brown, we've already picked. Collier Dawkins was the other player that we looked at as a midfielder. So we're going to take him with this next pick. Two picks to go. We will probably go with another Ruckman, I think. We'll just have a look and see what's here. We'll take Hale. Here's the pick. Well, the player we didn't pick last time. And then finally, we will be taking probably another small forward, I would say. Actually, no, let's take a key defender. Let's have a look if there is a key defender here for us. There's not... Oh, O'Donnell, we've already picked. So we don't, won't go with him. We'll go for a small forward then. And let's go Tex Wanganin. I don't usually pick him up. Let's draft him. He's got good potential. Thankfully, just the two picks in the rookie draft this year, not too many players that we need to look at. We're just going to be taking the best players available. So let's take Cunningham, who's a 69 overall, he's a key defender. We'll draft him, and then with our final pick in the draft, we'll take Greggs down. Actually, no, we're not going to take Greggs, we're going to take Milne, because I thought Greggs was the best available Ruckman. We'll take Milne, who's a 68 overall. We're probably just going to leave him under contract for one year and then trade him. But that will be the drafting period done. As predicted, we had to rejig a few contracts. That is all done now. Guernsey numbers, I will take care of as always. There's always a lot of Guernsey numbers to go through. One change that I will be doing, it's not really a change, but I will be giving Ben King. No, I can't give him the number 23. Who's weighing number 23 at the moment? Weddle, that's fine. We'll give him number 19, made famous by Mr. Dunstall. It will, that will, that's the only Guernsey number I'm gonna show right for now. Everybody else I'll worry about later, but let's get into Season 2. Okay, we have reached the start of Season 2. Fremantle is here for our pre-season fixture. We're going over to Perth to play that game. We only have the one injury so far, which is good, which is McKenzie. I don't know how long he's going to be out for, but hopefully it's not going to be too long. I'm going to have a jig around with the team, and then I'll present to you what we have for this upcoming year. Okay, this is going to be the team for at least the first couple of rounds. Mackenzie's the only injury, so ordinarily he would be on the bench. I don't know who would come out. I haven't really decided yet, but we've got Will McCabe as the sub. He's probably going to be the sacrificial lamb, unfortunately, but we've got Jieth. I, I still don't know how to say this guy's name. I'm really sorry, guys. Jieth, Stain as our one of our key defenders. Scrimshaw, MP, Sicily, and Cumming. Actually, scrap that. I'm going to be putting Stein on the bench. McCabe can start. I've decided, young player, we're going to give him a chance. 26 games he played last year, and he was really good. So we're going to start him at fullback. So the back six is going to be that. Will Day is going to start on the wing with Connor Nash and Josh Ward through the midfield with Giant Newcomb and Hugh McCluggage taking up the roving positions. Team English is going to be in the ruck. Dylan Moore is going to be on half forward. Ben King at center half forward. Nick Watson at half forward. Sam Butler, Mitch Lewis, and Jack Ginvan make up the full forward line. Ivan Soldo is going to be our backup ruckman with Josh Weddle, Jack Graham, Cameron Tracy, who's the number one draft pick. Uh, he's going to be on the bench. And then we've got Jake Stain as our sub. Now, I'm really disappointed, actually, in Hardwick. He's down to an 82 overall. So he was like an 85 when I signed him, and he's only 28. And he's already regressing, so we might actually have to trade him already. So 
that was a little bit of a disappointing signing on my heart, my behalf. Well, not my behalf, he was already here technically speaking, but I was hoping he would be a little bit better. So he's sitting out for now, and obviously the rest of our bench, you know what it looks like. Everybody else is basically the same. Pre-season time up against Fremantle. How do we go? We get a very nice win to kick ourselves off. We were down at halftime by four goals. Actually, it was five goals. But then worked our way back into the game with an eight goal to two third quarter. Not that a pre-season game really matters. There are the leading ball winners and goal kickers. We have GWS in round one, which will be a very interesting match. I'm very excited to see how that plays out. We've got an injury to Mitch Lewis already, which is not good, which means Cameron Tracy will get his debut at full forward. Who do we bring in? I don't really think we have too many backup key forwards. We do have Connor Reese, who is one of our draft picks. Not really where I want to go. Actually, we have we have plenty of backup key forwards. What am I talking about? We have Gollant. We have... Where's the other guy? Uh, Cooper Sharman. We're going to bring Cooper Sharman into the bench is what we're going to do. Great. Mitch Lewis has just done his ACL. Fantastic. So he's out for a little bit. And Mackenzie's out with syndesmosis, which isn't ideal, but, you know, he'll be back soon. But, yeah, that sucks to lose Mitch Lewis to an ACL. Not an ideal. He was really important for us last year. Round one, GWS at Giant Stadium. We get absolutely battered. Not great. Jesse Hogan kicks six. Tracy kicks four goals on debut, so that admittedly was quite nice. But not great for us. I will be back in 10 weeks, 11 weeks, when the mid-season draft comes around. Hopefully the wheels haven't completely fallen off by then. And hopefully we're around the top of the ladder, so we'll see how we go. Okay, this is... This has been a fun season so far. I've really actually thoroughly enjoyed this. We lost in round one by a fair bit. We had a draw in round two, which I'll show you the score of in a minute. And then we've won every game since. It's been, it's been an absolute blast this second season. I've really thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm going to show you the best score I reckon I've ever seen. Where is it? What a scoreline! 176 apiece in a draw. 25 goals, 26. It was 12 goals to 11 in the final quarter. Essendon kicked 12 goals, 12 in the final quarter. We kicked 11 goals, 7. And it was a draw. Just an absolutely bizarre game. And Nick Watson kicked 7, which is always great. Yeah, he's at, he's at a, he's had a pretty good season. Uh, Watson, if we have a look at his statistics, he's the currently state of injuries at the club at the moment. If I can find Watson, he's uh, he's up to th 55 goals for his career, 32 games played. He hasn't missed a game so far this year. Been really happy with his output. McCabe has been putting in some good performances at fullback in terms of our other young players. And Tracy, again, as our full forward, he missed a few games, but he's been really good. Been really happy with his Output. Now let's have a look at who we want to pick in the mid-season draft. Who's been taken so far? Callum Ward's gone back to GWS. Nick Haynes has gone to Melbourne. Zach Tui gone to Richmond. Jake Collardasny has gone to West Coast. Zach Guthrie's gone to Sydney. Alex chincotta has gone to Frio. Tomlinson to Brisbane. Tommy Sparrow to Western Bulldogs. Brandon Ellis to Collingwood. Jared Witts to Adelaide and Alia Alia to Geelong. So if we want to go down the path of getting some of these mid-season draft guys at a later date, that might be the way to go. But it says Ryan Angwin is available. I don't know what his overall is. So if we look at midfielders and we scroll down to Ryan Angwin, I don't know what his potential is. That is the question. 83 to 91. I don't necessarily need another midfielder, but the thought of getting the trade asset, the trade asset of Ryan Angwin is sort of, is what's making me go here. Because I had, for, for those of you who've been watching my Adelaide Crows series, I my, I don't know if it was my last video or the video before, but in the mid-season draft, I had the opportunity to either take Jai Clark or Alex Sexton. And stupidly, I took Alex Sexton because I needed a forward. But then I was in when I was editing, I was like, that is the stupidest decision I possibly could have made. 
So I was like, why would I not take Jai Clark? He's really, really good. And this is before the update because a lot of players got nerfed in the update. Anyway, we're going to be taking Ryan Angwin is basically what I'm... <laughs> long story short, that's what I'm doing here in the mid-season draft. We only need the one pick. I don't think I'll keep an eye on the rest of the draft. We have now got Port Adelaide. We're currently sitting in sixth in Sir Duck Nichols' round. We're in Tassie. Jarman Impey is injured. We'll see if we have a defender on the bench. We do in Massimo D'Ambrosio, which is actually one of the great names, in my opinion, in the AFL at the moment. Sam Butler is back. Wingard can come to the bench. Wingard's actually played a few games for us, and he kicked a couple of goals here and there. Blake Hardwick's all the way down to a 74, and who was it that I was thinking of? Jake Stain, who was an 84 when we brought him in. He's now down to like a 77, so we're probably going to move on from him next season as well. He's a 76 now. So he was a 77 at one point, and he's just been regressing as the season's gone on. So we'll keep him there for now. But let's keep the winning run alive. We've got the wonderful Guernseys in place. We get a nice win over Port Adelaide. 10 point winners, nine goals to four in the final quarter. Who kicks the goals? Watson kicked three, King kicked three. Newcomb and McKenzie got a lot of the ball. A very good result. I'll come back at the end of the home and away season. Hopefully we're still in a, in a reasonable position and we will go from there. Okay, we have reached the end of the season and I just wanted to show off this game. This is a real thing that happened. We had another draw, another high scoring draw, not as crazy as the last one, but we kicked nine goals to four in the final quarter to force a draw. Butler kicked four. It was another weird game. They had more of the ball than we did. We probably deserved to lose this one, but we we finished the season. We are, we're on top of the ladder, which is great. We uh, have a look at things. We've got Essendon in a qualifying final at home, which I'm very happy about. We've done very well. But yeah, big game, big rivalry, Hawthorne-Essendon. I spoke about it, a little bit about it in the Essendon video that I made. But yes, Hawthorne-Essendon, we're on the other side of the rivalry now. So it's going to be very, very big to see how we get this job done. If we can get this done in two seasons, that would be an amazing achievement because I think Hawthorne's list a lot of young players, but not a lot of experienced players, and you need experienced players to win AFL Premiership. So let's get this show on the road. We have been hit with injuries, but we've got players coming back from injury now. So Mitchell is out. Ward is going to come in for Tyler Brown, who has been filling in for us because McCluggage got injured. McCluggage is now back, actually, so Tyler Brown can move to the bench. anguin has been getting some game time on the wing, so he can sit on the bench. Ward and McCluggage can swap. Nick Watson missed out on the last game. He had a minor injury, but he only missed one game. Sydney Stack can come out. Our small forwards have been absolutely decimated largely this season, but they're actually mostly healthy. Actually, they're all healthy now, which is great. But we've got an injury to Mitchell. McKenzie's got a long-term injury, unfortunately. McNeil, we did play at one point in time, but he got injured. And then we've got the ACL injury too. Lewis that we were already aware, aware of and Will Day is back as well. We've got to find a way to get Will Day rhyming too much into this team. Trip Sharman can come out. Jack Graham can move to the bench. I will... Will Day or Josh Ward. We'll put Josh Ward in the middle. Will Day can go to the wing. Chad Wingard can be the sub. Graham, Angwin and Weddle can be the bench unit with Soldo as the backup run. Okay, I like it. Qualifying final at home. MCG, 4th of September, 63 point win. We are through to the prelim. We get the week off, we win by 10 goals, happy days. Lots of goals to Cooper Tracy and Josh Ward. Actually, it's only three between, uh, three each is what I'm trying to say. So it's not really a lot of goals. But Cooper Tracy, I've really been impressed with. I'll be interested to see how many goals he has actually ended up with for the season. Gold Coast at home, which is good. They finished in sixth. It's the the Ben King revenge game. I'm quite looking forward to it. If we lose to Gold Coast, I'll be very upset. I mean, I'll be mixed because they're my team, but largely upset for the sake of the rebuild. Jayath can come out for Weddle. Who's going to come in? We don't really have... Oh, we do have. We have Seamus Mitchell, who was injured last week, but now he is back healthy, which is good. Prelim final time. We did give the Suns a few players. They gave us a player. Hopefully it hasn't cost us too much. We win by 11. I thought we lost, but it's all good. We sneak through to the grand final. Back-to-back -back seasons. 
Tracy kicks three again. Jed Walter for them kicks two, getting a bit more game time now that Ben King's off the squad. Who do we play in the grand final? It's a rematch of the qualifying final. 27th of September, 2025. The Bombers, they finally won some finals after I think 2004 was their last finals win. We beat them in the qualifying final by 63 points, I think it was. McCluggage is injured. He's going to miss out on the grand final. That is not ideal, but, you know, we can... Graham can go there, not Angwin. McCluggage can come out for... Mackenzie's back. Okay, that's good. Mackenzie can then play in the middle. Graham can sit on the bench. Nobody else is ready to come back yet, unfortunately. So McCluggage, our big money recruit... He's going to miss out on the grand final. Ben King, at least, is out there. He's up to a 91 overall. Cameron Tracy, solid investment. He's up to an 86 overall now, which I think is actually what Mitchell Lewis, his uh, overall is. Are we a happy team at Hawthorne this year? Back-to-back -back premierships for the second video in a row. Who gets the Norma Smith medal? That's what I want to know. We dominate disposals. I've lost my AirPod. My volume's gone, unfortunately. So I'll only be able to listen to myself talk, which is a bit funny. But anyway, who gets the Norma Smith medal? Josh Ward probably gets it. Soldo had 43 touches as a backup ruckman. I don't mind that. But yeah, nobody really stood out with the goal, so I'd have to say Ward gets the Norm Smith medal. Eight goals to three in the final quarter. Big first quarter as well, seven goals to four. Very happy days if you're a Hawthorne fan. Let's have a look at the statistics now. So Tracy finished second in the goal kicking eventually. 73 goals for the season. Not a bad debut season for, your, for the number one pick. Very happy with that. Ben King was good. 60 goals for the season isn't too bad. He didn't miss any games, which I was very happy with. But considering we lost our... Whoopsie daisy. Considering we lost our full forward in pre-season and he had to essentially fill in for us. He was only going to be playing a backup role this year. I'm very happy with how that has actually turned out. But if we look strictly at Hawthorne players now, Butler kicked 42, Ginevan kicked 39 again for his third consecutive premiership. Moore, 38. Watson, 38. Cooper Sharman filled in a couple of games, kicked 20. Wingard again, only played a handful of games, kicked 16. Soldo was really good as our backup ruckman. Tim English was really good, really good addition. In terms of the disposals, Giant Newcomb played every game, just 12 disposals shy of 1,000 for the year, but very happy with, with, uh, with the output. I'm very, very impressed. We were also fairly accurate in front of goal, apart from, <laughs> apart from Ginevan, who did kick 45 behinds. Which, uh, which isn't ideal, but he did very well with the goal assist, but it must be said. But very happy with, with our goal kicking this year. So yeah, Ginevan kicked more behinds than Butler kicked goals, which is quite funny. Newcomb got the most goal assists, or score assists, I should say. Soldo had 30, Moore had 30, 28 each to McCluggage and Ginevan. McCluggage unfortunately missed out on the Premiership for injury. Soldo finished second in the Brownlow, even though Ruckman don't really count towards the Brownlow in my opinion in this recent update that they've done. That would go to Jason Horn Francis under my methodology. Tracy ended up with 65 goals in the home and away senior, yeah, home and away season. Finished third in the Coleman. Only the four votes for the Rising Star Award for Tracy, unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. And do we not have a single All-Australian? That's a bit harsh. We won the Premiership. We are by far and away the best team in the competition. But that is going to do it for today, guys. You have been a pleasant audience for me. I've really enjoyed making this video for you. You've, you've shown this series so much support and it has allowed the channel to grow so much. We've recently jumped over the 400 subscriber mark. I was, my, my goal initially was to get to 500 by the end of June. But the rate that you're going, you guys will absolutely smash that. So let's keep going with that target for now. 
Now, this next team that we're going to be rebuilding is the most highly requested rebuild we have done so far. There has been people constantly asking me about this team. It's the team that finished second on the ladder in this past season in my game. So if you have a look over the ladder, you already know who it is. But I'm going to play their song for you now as part of the outro. Until next time, guys, I hope you have a great day wherever you are in the world. Please like and subscribe as it really does help out the channel. And I'll see you guys then. Bye. Send up, we'll keep our end up, and they will know that they've been playing against the famous old dark blue.